Let's get to know our world. Gravity is a law of nature that we use to express the tendency of two objects in space to move towards each other. Gravity is one of the most fundamental forces and laws in nature. In the existence of almost all celestial bodies, gravity plays a role in various ways. All the objects in the universe take place in the structure we call space-time tissue water. You can think of it as a huge sheet like in the image. Each mass bends different points of that sheet in direct proportion to their mass. Imagine putting a dumbbell or bowling ball on a stretched sheet, the sheet will bend down. Celestial bodies have an initial velocity due to the explosion of other celestial bodies that formed them during their existence. For example, when the gas cloud nebula that gave birth to the sun and the entire solar system exploded, the sun was formed moving at a certain initial speed. Similarly, Earth had a certain initial speed as it was formed as a result of this explosion. Although these velocities may change due to meteor impacts, since the friction in space-time is almost non-existent, the objects continue to move continuously by maintaining that initial velocity to a large extent. Where does it pull gravity? Imagine having a bowling ball in the middle of your stretched sheet. Due to this mass, the sheet was bent downwards. Let this be the sun. Let the earth be a smaller and lighter marble. He actually bends the sheet a certain amount in his own way, however, this twist is much, much smaller than that of a bowling ball. For this reason, you will hardly even see the sheet bend. However, if you look very carefully, you can see that the marble bends the sheet. The moon revolves around the earth, as the earth has its own, twisting power. Of course, similarly, the moon also bends the fabric of space-time, however, this amount of twist is much less than that of the earth and that of the sun. This amount of bending varies depending on the mass of the objects. Now, let the ball of the world try to move in that curved sheet. Where will it go? If he tries to go straight, he will be able to move around the big object in the middle because of the bent bed sheet unless you apply an additional force from the outside. Because the sheet is bent inward because of that huge mass. Here, we call the path followed by smaller objects rotating around a large object orbit. If you push the small ball with a constant force, you will see that the bowling ball enters an orbit around it. The Earth orbits the Sun in this way. Orbital motion is the elliptical, or circular, motions made by smaller celestial bodies moving within the space-time plane bent by large celestial bodies. So why doesn't it blow? In fact, if the first velocity of the Earth were high enough, it would go out without getting caught in the bent part of that curved sheet. While the solar system was being formed, some celestial bodies were able to escape from the sun's gravity, more precisely, the space-time twist, because they were very fast. However, the celestial bodies currently in orbit did not have the first speed to achieve this. Therefore, these objects are still around the sun. As you may notice, it is also important how the question is asked, since the Earth is one of the celestial bodies remaining around the Sun, we are now living things that have evolved on it and we are asking these questions. However, Earth is not a special celestial body due to its structure. Dozens of celestial bodies similar to Earth could not remain in orbit of the Sun due to their high initial velocities and were thrown into space. Since these cannot remain in a balanced structure, life will probably never develop on them, and the creatures that ask these questions will not be able to evolve. So, why don't they fall to the center, that is, the sun, where the chador bends, and end their movement? Yes, if you send a ball around a taut sheet with a large bowling ball in the middle, the ball will hit the middle bowling ball after one to two rounds in orbit. Because there is a huge friction force in the balls moving on the sheet. Since the friction force acts in the opposite direction to the movement of the balls, it slows them down rapidly. The slowing balls also get caught in the center where they rotate in their orbit. But in space, there is no frictional force, or negligibly low. 
Although the initial velocity of the objects is not enough to escape the gravitational pull of the sun, it is so high that it can rotate around for billions of years. If there was friction, they would of course fall into the center and stop the sun would swallow them. However, since there is no friction and they are fast enough, they keep spinning before they can get away from the sun but close to it. But if we look at it from a perspective, the question is quite appropriate. In fact, if the sun had an infinite lifespan, that is, it would not explode after 4.5 billion years, some planets could crash into the sun trillions of years later, depending on the forces acting on it. It is determined by physical parameters such as the initial velocity of the objects, the distance between the orbiting celestial body, for example the Earth, and the central celestial body, for example the Sun. Studies of the Earth's approach to and away from the Sun are quite complex and extensive. However, as the rotation of the Sun around itself slows down to 3 milliseconds every 100 years, the Earth is thought to be moving away from the Sun extremely slowly. What is the Sun revolving around? Around a black hole in the center of the galaxy, like about a hundred billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Black holes that so are massive objects in space-time sheets, to twist, you stand aside, adds a, tear it passes, actually your demise on, rather tear tear they're not quite sure at the moment. This is why they bend the sheet so that countless large celestial bodies can rotate around them. Again, because of the initial velocity and the lack of friction, the sun does not move far from that black hole and get close. In fact, as we just mentioned, the distance of both the Earth and the Sun from the object around which they revolve is gradually changing, but this is not very important at this stage. The only thing to know is that everything revolves around something in the universe. Of course, some celestial bodies may be roaming through space, however, most of the time these objects eventually orbit a celestial body and remain in this orbit. 